Please welcome the founder and CEO of iMerit, Radha Basu, as she talks about 2022, the year of ML data ops, the ground truth of AI. Hello, welcome to the iMerit ML Ops Data Summit done in conjunction with TechCrunch. I'm Radha Basu, founder and CEO of iMerit, and I'm delighted to have such a large audience, I think it's over 2,000 people who are attending the summit. So we could ask the question, why do we have an MLOps data summit? Well, I've asked myself that same question. It is because we are at the nexus of taking AI into production. It is at the first few steps, you might almost call it baby steps, where AI products built on AI algorithms are actually going into production into the field. So when you look at the whole ML ops area, you would think of it as ML that's model centric ops plus data ops. And in this phase of production, Data, the highest quality data, is perhaps the most important part of making AI production successful. There's a saying, um, and I'm trying to think it was, I think it was John Donne who said, no man is an island. No person is an island. So no model is an island. So our ability to be able to take these models it's very important for an end-to-end -end production success. So the promise of AI isn't in the model itself and the isolation, but in the way that this is actually taken into the field. And that's where the entire ML ops life cycle starts. The data life cycle starts because you start with labeling, you actually build and annotate and build the models and train the algorithms. And we've had at iMerit a real fortunate uh, to be have a ringside seat. I think over the last seven years, we've close to a billion annotations that we've done, and we've seen these models being built. We have helped to train those algorithms. So the expertise that's developed is now can work very closely with our clients to go into the next levels. If you look at autonomous vehicles or autonomous mobility, that takes you into mapping, the mapping on the roads. And the mapping is different depending upon which client you're working with or which set of cars you're working with or which set of algorithms. And then going into validation and monitoring. And this whole life cycle requires very much an ML ops infrastructure that is very secure. And that's an enterprise grade infrastructure that has built into it that is terraformed and has CI CD built into it. So you can do continuous integration and continuous deployment as the environment changes in which the ML, the, the AI algorithms are being deployed. So this ringside seat has given us gaining a great way to gain the learnings time and again and deep insight into how to make things scale. So let's take this whole field of autonomous mobility, which is, of course, one of the first areas that AI is going into production and definitely the area in which we as a company have had a ringside seat. And you'll hear many speakers today. In autonomous mobility, you know, you think about this, um, as James Kuffner described it, it's ground robots, aerial robots, and home robots all coming together. So let us talk a little bit about the kinds of things that happen and you'll hear about today as autonomous vehicles go into the field operations. The data is key. A lot more data is needed to bring AI into the physical world. And it's all about the data within. 
the things you will hear from our speakers today, and I know this is the reason why so many people, I think it's like 2,200 plus people have registered for this conference. And we've heard from many practitioners who have said, this is exactly what we're looking for. What will you hear from our speakers? Leveraging human intelligence to advance the AI, scaling the data pipeline for faster deployment, and a very important one, one that's close to my heart, solving edge cases. Uh, there have been a couple of times I have been uh, called the edge case CEO or the edge caser, I love it, but it also shows that edge cases and solving them are such a critical part of bringing AI into production. And leveraging the broader ecosystem, including various partners and experts, and I will talk about that in just a minute. So in this environment, so what are some of the use cases that combine the multi-sensor data? You know, in the car, I was in an autonomous vehicle. I was trying it out. I have to say the first time I went out in it was a bit of a scary experience because I was sitting there thinking and they had the big screens, thinking, oh, we annotated that. We mapped that. What is happening on the road? So these are the kinds of things that we start to look at. So one of the things, it's the changes in road conditions, temporary construction zones, and a very interesting thing that came up, false positive readings of the environment, reflections of cars on large win windows or pedestrians walking, um, happened to be on a by a in an front of an apple front of an apple store, large glass windows, and see the reflections of the pedestrians. Holiday environments, I again had the experience of being in a car during the Halloween season. And it's really interesting to look at human beings and being able to look at the, um, the Halloween decorations that look like human beings or the other way around on the sides of the road. So it is having, being able to navigate and that's why they're ground robots. And if you take a city like Las Vegas, you're working with aerial robots, they have the, the shuttles coming in as well. And it's putting all of this together, looking at driver distraction and safety. So these edge cases then happen as the vehicles are on the road. Our ability with technology, so you will hear today about the edge case technologies or the edge case engine, to be able to pick that up and do triage on it and in real time look at how this can will change policies, being able to, it's sort of like, I'm not saying the word metaverse, but it's the meta, it's the loop, the infinite loop in that you're training their algorithm and it's going back into the field and it's coming back and the edge cases are being deployed. It is that continuous cycle that is a hallmark of really being able to take ML data ops into the environment. Again, resulting in the highest quality data. For us, I think this brings a little bit of a different view in that it is building our expertise and judgment along with the technology. So looking at it and saying, what technologies do we need in order to create the highest quality data? And this is where partners come in. Uh, not many companies will have a summit where partners come in to be speakers. You will hear from them. Partners come into a virtual booth to actually showcase their products. And it's important that we might have the best tool for a NLP tool from a partner in relevance extraction. Somebody else might have the best LIDAR tool. The, the, uh, the point cloud tool may be something we have to develop. And pulling all of this together is the infrastructure and the dashboard for reporting analytics and insight into what is happening in the ML ops ecosystem. And that ground control and the dashboard for it is something you will hear about today from iMerit folks. So it brings together this ecosystem as we go through labeling, mapping, validation, and monitoring. 
just in mapping tools alone for AV, we're using at least four or five mapping tools. And the expertise around this becomes the clear differentiator in being able to deploy this at scale. Let me take a couple of other examples, because as I merit, and today you will hear from experts in med AI, in um, e-commerce, social media, fintech, and something that's emerging lately very much so is that speech is the new UI and the importance of the RPA around customer service. So you will hear from a number of these people who are actually deploying these products and actually developing and deploying the products. So when you look at MedAI, for example, determining uh, the edge cases of stromal cells versus tumor cells based on minute and subtle differences in shape and color. That's an example of an edge case. What I want to share on the med AI and the importance of it, because we're dealing with um, surgeons and radiologists and customer service in healthcare, is the importance of having those experts within the company. I merit has surgeons and radiologists who are not just on staff, but who are full-time solutions experts who work with our clients to be able to develop this infrastructure and also to determine what kind of technologies are needed to actually be able to use it in the field. We've been working with drones in looking at smart agriculture. Is something a healthier disease crop with a lot of uh, with a lot of floods and rains should where is the next time to be planting things so a variety of different areas in smart ag and there are many different examples of this and in that one of the um one of the key um things that struck in my mind and I'll give you an example which I think you will hear about today or see I was with one of our annotators who was actually labeling the algorithm. This was not in the mapping part, in the labeling. And there was a helicopter and the drone was coming in. And we there was no way we could see the helicopter or spot it. And I tried very hard. And then she used a few technologies that we're using in filters and actually went through three or four filters and actually looked at which of the filters gave her the best image. And as I looked at this come to life, and this was in a real time mode or actually in a dynamic mode, not quite real time, the importance of the edge case modules and the edge case technologies and the filtering and the enhancement of images became very, very clear because that produced the highest quality data. Let me take a minute and talk about the workforce or the experts in the loop that are needed and the intelligence needed for this. They have to be trained on nuances and edge cases, specialized with many years of experience. Some of our people have worked with clients for three and four years. You can be sure that they train the algorithms. Those algorithms are out in the field. They are the best people to look at the edge cases and look at the nuances and be able to fix them during a triage mode. The confidence to challenge algorithms and provide insights. Cross-trained for efficiency and very important, diverse in opinions and backgrounds. 54% of our employees are women. 83% um, are below 25 years of age. So very much born in this space. So at the end of it, what you will hear today is how to remove friction in ML ops, a view of the whole life cycle of ML data ops, reducing friction. And as I talked earlier, the throughput going from batch to streaming and eventually into real time. Safety escalations to SLA in minutes. Shifting from the precision from a brute force to a smarter surgical and impactful approach. Example, curated data in ag tech or med AI. Continuous feedback loop with expertise. 
Again, all of these underlying are the technologies that drive that. And you will hear this in a set of products called the iMerit Data Studio and also from our partners. So all of those joined together provide the end-to-end -end solution along with the solution architects and the consulting and the experience, the end-to-end -end data solution to produce the highest quality data for the ML ops journey. So I will end by saying the last mile of the journey, the very difficult, long, long tail last mile, propelled by technologies, and you hear a lot about them today, flexible opening, uh, open and leveraging the broader ecosystem of tools and services, including partners and their tools, tightly integrated with them. So it looks to the user, to, the, um, to our clients as one set of experiences. The complete journey, we should be thinking about the customer's complete journey through labeling, mapping, validation, monitoring, and triage and dynamic monitoring of things. From the model side to the ops side, taking this to the physical world. And so the iMerit end-to-end data solution is something you'll hear from us, is something that we are very much involved in, in the ecosystem, in the community, to reduce friction in the ML data ops and combining the talent, the technology and the processes to really be able to scale that in the enterprise ecosystem. So this is not just an I merit end-to-end -end solution. This is a solution that we aggregate together, integrate together, and offer the solution as a service to our clients. So I invite you to listen to our speakers, to the chats, to the panels about powering the deployment of AI. Thank you very much, and I'll speak, be speaking to you uh, later in the uh, later during the summit as well through some interviews as well as summing it up at the end. Thanks, and welcome to the iMerit ML Data Ops and TechCrunch Summit.